Okay, so that's two sheets of plywood I just picked up. That should be enough to take care of the entire closet organizer. Plus, I've got some boards left over from a project that I, I bought too many of. I don't remember what project that was for, but it was a recent one, but I bought way too many of those so I can use those for the trim. Actually, according to my really quick cut list I made, that's not gonna be exactly enough, but I should have enough left over plywood here that I can use for the shelves, I hope. I guess I'll have to measure these and see if they're wide enough. Do you like trying to hear me from this far away? Now I remember what those extra boards were for. I bought those when I made these doors because remember I was gonna make a frame on the back which I eliminated. But anyways, the reason why I'm out here is to see if I have enough of that white paint. It seems like I bought some white paint for the other closet organizer, but I sort of, I sort of forget these things. Why do I have so many different types of white paint? This is like a quarter gallon of paint. That's not gonna be enough for that whole closet. This is, oh, that's some more of that house paint. Everybody's favorite color there. There's nothing in there. Why am I saving this? Uh, I'm getting rid of that. Oh, I know something we haven't done in a while. Everybody's favorite feature, woodworking in the news. And that was woodworking in the news. Before I cut up any of that plywood, I wanna show you where I'm at with this design. Kinda of like the other closet, I think the easiest way to do this, let me hide the closet itself. Let me hide these face frames also. It makes the most sense to make this box as one piece and then this entire box as one piece. And ideally, they'll be a little bit too small so that they'll fit in the closet nicely and then I'll be able to add this face frame all along the edges there and take up any gap that's left between the cabinets and the walls of the closet. This smaller section is just going to be built with a couple of strips here and here and then I'll just put a board across top to give it some thickness. This taller cabinet here is going to be also really simple. These are all going to be adjustable shelves except for I want to put a stationary shelf in the middle just to help give it some stability and keep these two sides from bowing out. And then it's all going to sit on a base kind of a toe kick like I did the previous one or like basically like all cabinets do. And since these plans are just for myself I'm just kind of doing a crude layout of the cut list but I do like to make plans that I can follow measurements in my shop really easy. I don't want there to be any guessing when I go to build this thing. So what I've done here is I've laid out my cut list and then the dimensions of this box and this box and really that's all I need. Oh, and then this, but I'll double check these measurements to the actual closet size when I get there. I always wanna figure out a strategy for breaking down plywood into pieces that I can cut on my table saw more accurately. So each of these represents a full size sheet of plywood and these are my pieces. And you know, there's a couple of different ways I could break this down, but my main consideration are gonna be these, I guess you would call them cross cuts because these boards are just gonna to be too long this direction to cut on my table so I won't be able to set up a rip fence and they're too wide to really cut easily using my miter gauge. If it were a bunch of smaller pieces like these, I could just cut these out freehand a little oversize and then easily cut those down to their exact dimensions on the table saw, which is probably what I'll do with these pieces. But these longer pieces, I'm gonna have to set up a straight edge guide and get these as accurate as I can using my circular saw rather than the table saw. And then once I make those cuts, I'll be able to rip these down this way using my table saw because I'll be able to set up my rip fence for that 18 inch width. And this is the kind of thing that's just going to vary from person to person. In fact, it'll vary from project to project. I just got to think this through each time. There's two things I always have to consider. The accuracy of my circular saw cuts and the size of my table saw. Obviously, if you have a big table saw or maybe some big outfeed and infeed tables, you might be able to cut the entire sheet of plywood right on your table saw, but I don't have that. 
Now I can cut those pieces to 18 inches wide. They're all gonna be the same width, so that's pretty easy. It's gonna be a little bit tricky cutting that big piece, but it's right on the cusp of what I wanna handle on my table saw. Okay, that was easy enough just to cut out all of the pieces for both the long, tall cabinet and then the shorter base cabinet. I think I'll start by assembling this lower cabinet first. I'm gonna use pocket screws to assemble everything. The way I'm gonna assemble this is to conceal the pocket screws and this, one of these is just gonna be a middle shelf. I'm gonna put, in, put that in last after I make the cabinet shape. The top is just gonna be two strips, and that's just gonna save me on lumber. I don't need a full piece for that because there's gonna be the top of that cabinet that goes on top of this. These kind of right angle clamps are really handy, but I really don't want this to slip at all, so I'll put a clamp up here. Sometimes I can get away without using a clamp, just using my Kung Fu grip. I think I'll offset this shelf rather than put it right in the middle. And that's the lower cabinet. I just happened to think, when I did the other closet organizer, didn't I paint this first before assembling it? I don't remember. I don't even have paint. I still have to get the paint. All right, well, let's set this aside for now. In the meantime, hey, let's check in on Antonio. So you might remember I left Antonio with some homework to find examples of shoe shine boxes that he likes. Oh wow, so there's a whole website, American Shine Co. And these are beautiful. It looks like all of these boxes are just simply an empty, a big box, I guess to store all the shoe shine and brushes and all that stuff. And then the top part is kind of the key. The box hinges open. And then each one of these that I see has a place to put your shoe. It looks like there's a little cleat that your heel would fit into. Some of these have these like metal handles on the side and I think that's for taking that shoe shine cloth thing and so it wraps around that so you can kind of loop it around, I think. That might be actually something interesting to make out of wood. You could use a wood dowel. And then there's a totally different kind over here on eBay. Hmm. So this one from Nick Offerman's shop is beautiful. Beautiful, but it, to me it doesn't say shoe shine box because it doesn't have that foot rest on the top. All right, here's what I think we should do next. First, I'd like to have anybody who has a suggestion on this, please leave it down below. Remember, we're looking for beautiful, functional, and easy to make with simple tools, the ones that Antonio has in his shop. Think of it as a beginning woodworking project with flair. I have some more homework for you, Antonio. First of all, when you showed me the tools that you have, there were a few that I got to thinking about that you probably will want to consider getting. First of all, if we wanna do some sort of a curved cut on that first piece, you're gonna need a jigsaw. I don't know if you have one, but I highly recommend getting a random orbit sander. You're gonna need a couple of clamps because we're not gonna use any fasteners in this project, most likely. It's all gonna be glued together. I would suggest getting these kind of bar clamps or F clamps. There's lots and lots of different styles you could get. If you need any suggestions, just let me know. You probably already have it, but you're gonna need safety equipment. I like to, this is an, an N99 mask, filters out sawdust and hearing protection. You can get probably better ones than this. You can get those kind that just fit in your ear if you want. And then some sort of safety glasses. Don't work on any of your tools without using those. And when you're using your table saw, you're gonna need some sort of a push stick so your fingers aren't close to the blade. I use this gripper from Micro, Micro Jig. I never make a cut without one of these, so you might wanna consider it. I think it works great. This is gonna be the tall cabinet. You know, I guess I'm just gonna go ahead and assemble it and then paint it. It shouldn't be that much difficult or much more hard. It shouldn't be, it should be more much better. It's getting close to the end of the day. 
and the video. I can't remember if you were around for my other closet organizer that I put in some shelf pins, and that's what I'm gonna do on this one using this handy dandy jig. But I'll be able to use that once it's assembled and then just drill those out. You guys enjoying the build with Antonio segment? I think it's gonna be fun to see where it goes. Look at that, Kung Fu grip. But you know what? Antonio is not a total, total beginning woodworker. You should see this uh, chicken coop he made. I saw it on social media and then I asked him to send me over a tour of it. I'll show you that in the next, in the next video. See all these reasons just keep, keep you coming back for more. Plus this is the only woodworking show willing to work without the light zone. You know what? I need to do that side next. I mean, they always say in to shoot video, you just gotta have as much light as possible. Make sure everything is well lit. And so I started turning off the lights and just using natural available light. And I don't know, I think it, I think it looks pretty cool for the most part. You just gotta crank up your ISO on your camera. You know, you're basically breaking all of those photography rules. I, I shoot it like 1600 ISO now, but there's also some times when the, the shadows are just too harsh. And you know, since I'm not gluing this together, there's no reason why I couldn't take it apart if painting becomes that much of a problem while it's assembled. You know what I'm excited about? The gym reopens on Monday. I think it's gonna be kind of weird gym for a while, but a gym nonetheless. This is gonna be the last thing I do today. I can tell when I'm getting tired at the end of the day because I start taking shortcuts, like using my Kung Fu grip instead of clamping this together. And I just noticed that this one slipped just a little bit. I turned off the mood lighting. This is one of those situations where I have to have the overhead light. This shelf I'm gonna put right in the middle. Well, there you have it. I think we've come a long way since the beginning of this video, don't you think? I remember when I was unloading the lumber thinking, hmm, where's this video gonna go? Now here we are at the end and I'm still wondering, did this video really go anywhere? Okay, you want something to be happy about? I haven't done this in a while. I'll leave you with this. Something to be happy about. The splash of fish. Yeah, I think we can do better than that. Robot servants, <laughs> now we've got something. Weren't we all supposed to have robot servants by now? Oh wait, those are called CNC machines. <laughs> I'll see you guys later.